Hello, everybody. Oh, I recognize some of those faces. Hello, hello. Okay, we're gonna do this a little bit differently this time, guys. Um, I was telling Nicola and she agreed that voice work can be quite personal. And if you have a question, it's not always a like a two line kind of question that you can type in and I'll, and I'll quote you on. So what we're gonna do is Nicola and I are gonna talk um, for the first part of the call. And so we're not going to have you type in your questions throughout the call. I'm going to open it up for a Q&A in the end. And then each person, when you have a question, I'll let you ask Nicola directly. And I, it'll be a little more personal that way. And also, you can be, you know, a little more clear. I think it'd be easier to communicate rather than me just quoting everyone on this subject. So, I just got stage fright. I just completely forgot your name for a second. <laughs> so I'm going to hand over in a second, but I, if you're not already a member of Nicola's Facebook group, I'm going to ask her to please post it and her website and everything on the comment section on Facebook after this call. Um, I'll, I'll put a link up and then, and, um, but that's where I first started watching Nicola's weekly videos about vocal health. And if anyone knows me at all, they know that uh, what was the, the latest adventure, me taking something with ethanol in it, because they said it would clear catarrh from your throat. And I thought I was going to die on a Thursday call. So I really needed Nicola's wisdom. And I always <laughs> promised myself I would pay more attention to it at a later date, which doesn't come up ever. So I asked Nicola to join us to give us some hacks. Um, because as narrators, we have been known to work through, we're just gonna finish this book and we'll take care of our voice later. <laughs> and on to the next book. Nicola is gonna give us some hacks and tricks and tips. And then I'm gonna go on her website and see what she can teach me about accents as well. So over to you, Nicola. So, um, hi everybody. How long do you want me to talk for? I'm um, just, if you if we could start off we'll just have a chat with questions and see how far it goes naturally believe me people will have questions at, stemming from our talk but what i'm interested in what you see narrators do and complain about and what i really would love is to be able to find some habits because most vocal health, I know that you need to learn to do six hours of warm up exercises and 18 hours of this and never ever eat anything good or have your six shots of espresso before recording. I know that, right? That I'm supposed to drink 20 gallons of water. But I would love some little tips that I could just do naturally that I aren't horrible. You have been <laughs> informed because you only need about five to 15 minutes to do a proper efficient warm-up you don't need loads of time so firstly chill your boots have an extra <laughs> half an hour in bed <laughs> <You'll be all laughs> um, i think one of the things that gets confusing about vocal health for a lot of voice professionals is the difference between say a vo vocal warm-up as in preparing yourself and a vocal workout, i.e. working on a particular element of technique, um, which was a, a really nice way for me of separating the two. So if I have a lovely hour to spend, um, then I'll maybe, I'll get the mat out, I'll lie on the floor, I'll do some stretches, some breathing, I'll work on resonance and I'll, you know, do lots of release and it'll be lovely and indulgent and I'll be rolling around the floor and maybe, you know, cheesecloth and it'll be fabulous. If yeah. I know I've got to jump in the booth at half past nine and do a load of IVRs and a load of corporates and a load of this, that and the other, I've got a five minute to 15 minute really bespoke for my voice. Yeah, that's it. 
<laughs> that gets me ready. And sometimes it's five minutes because my son's been a pain in the hole and wouldn't go to nursery quick enough. Or sometimes it's 15 minutes because my nan is, my mum's looking after, you know, like these things are all um, at the mercy of life. <laughs> so I think the first thing to do is be really realistic about what you can give um, consistently to exploring your practice and if you only have five minutes to jump in the booth then all you need is uh, somebody who knows about voice who can listen to your voice and pick out the bits and bobs that feel a little bit tense or hear where there are elements of the voice that sound like they could be working more efficiently and get them to give you a few exercises for it and boom there you go and then the other thing to remember is that every day is different like I've just said you know we're all at the mercy of life really and sometimes you might need 15 minutes or actually your warm-up is better spent on the floor for 10 minutes just connecting with a lower breath and just releasing some tension in the neck and shoulders and one of the things I um we taught hydration came up there as well didn't it and coffee came up there so can I dispel those myths as well a little bit yes but please don't take my coffee away from me but you, can, <laughs> you do you have your coffee okay, okay. it's fine most of the new research, as far as I can tell at the moment, from um, the powers that be and all my mentors and the people I trust, um, in terms of caffeine, is that if you're a regular caffeine drinker, um, the diuretic effect that is leads to the hydration, the dehydration that people talk about when you have coffee, um, doesn't actually affect you as much as it would somebody like me who has one espresso martini every six what, months when they needed to stay awake to go to the theater <laughs> you don't you don't drink how do you wake up you don't drink any coffee eyes. i open my eyes you don't drink I any coffee and do you drink tea I drink, I drink tea yeah but not in the morning though tea for me is something to put a biscuit in a little bit later in the day <laughs> um i think uh i wake up Listen, I'm woken up by a four-year-old, usually with a hand puppet or uh, farting in my face. <laughs> so uh, at the moment, that's my existence. But my, I walk. I go for a walk every morning for about an hour. That's and that's my, before uh, you record, so that's a warm-up, isn't it? Yeah, well, it gets me. It gets my blood going and the breath going and yeah. settles my head down and I listen to a few podcasts and, uh, you know, just uh, enjoy the leaves or whatever happens to be around. Yeah. But the coffee thing, yeah, there are other things that happen with coffee and a lot of people talk about maybe it's the, it's the cream that you put in or the milk that you put in that affects the mouth. Um, but everybody is different as well, which is the important thing to remember with vocal health. This is the thing that infuriates me um, with vocal health advice that's kind of bandying around the Facebook forums because you'll see everybody has a different solution, right? Have a wee bit of apple cider vinegar. Um, rub peanut butter under your tongue, uh, chew some chewing gum, have mouthwash, a green apple. You know, everybody's different and everybody has their own little hack and that's fine. If you've got something that works for you, happy days. The truth about anything to do with mouth noise, aside from something that is an actual pathology, like something related to medication or a pre-existing condition, the only thing that's going to get rid of mouth clicks and all that kind of stuff is is hydration is yeah, water yeah. fluids doesn't have to be water you know everything counts as hydration the food we eat has water in it and that's another thing to consider is that if you if you are someone who eats a lot of fruit and vegetables and you eat quite healthy and lots of fish and all that kind of stuff and you you're reasonably healthy then you're not probably going to need as much water as someone who eats burgers and pizzas all day um I'm probably half and half in my life. <laughs> yeah, there was me before March this year, and then there yeah, was yeah. me after March. <laughs> Lockdown diets yeah. is a whole, whole other thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so the key to all of this in terms of vocal health and awareness and readiness to work is, Bob said it already, awareness. <laughs> so it's the idea that um, your body is your body and it will respond very differently to all these things that we have to consider than someone else's so just make sure you're keeping an eye on it you know i know today i've been sweating buckets um because it's really really hot over here in the uk <laughs> uh, the most of the time. <laughs> yeah. so it's it's i'm gonna need more water tomorrow and tonight like i've got my bottle of water here but i've also got a wee wine yeah but i mean but the thing is is so if you were to coach someone, if somebody were to go to you for a vocal health session, yeah. would you, you would listen to their specific voice things 
like like we go to an engineer to set up our pro tools and they do stacks for us you would do a stack for our warm-up is that what you do uh, i don't use pro tools i'm not quite sure what no but like for our voice Oh, a stack. Oh, sorry, a stack. But like all the audio programs for like narrators, they do a stack of it's going to debrief, then de-click, then de you know what I mean? They, and they give you the little thing and then you just hit the button. <laughs> um, yeah, that might be an analogy. Um, I suppose, I, I, I can't say for sure because I'm not 100% sure what a stack is. Okay. Uh, but um, what I do when someone comes to me, usually people come to me with, no one comes going, I don't really know what's wrong listen to me uh, people come with a i've been told this or i feel like this or when i've recorded for a bit this happens and the initial job is to talk to them and have a little conversation you know just to get to know them so they don't think i'm a complete agent well i am a complete agent but i don't know my shit <laughs> Um, so uh and then and then what i do during that chat when i'm talking to them is i'm listening to their voice and I'm doing a little kind of a um, radar scan and picking up using particular um, questions in my head and going, do I hear this? Do I hear that? What's going on there? And I'm sort of listening for myself to see what I can hear and see in their voice and their um, physicality in relation to and sort of in contrast or alongside what they've said to me um, and those two bits of input then I can start to go right well they think it's that but actually I think it's that and um, they've mentioned this and I can see that because xyz and I start to sort of you know mold the two together and then in my head I um, pull out all the bits and bobs and the things that I think they'd be beneficial for them because no two sessions are the same and no two voices are the same there are different ways in for everybody and then do you so, give them exercises to do for their voice? So, today, so you do example. a stack. You're doing a stack. I want one. Can I book you for one after this call? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes. I want a stack. I want a voice stack. Stack, 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 stack. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, Maybe that's what you're today. doing. You're doing a stack. Any okay. narrator will know what you're talking about. Okay, good. Because that's Maybe like, that, the, that, we that, all want a stack that. for our audio. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, so that's what I do. It kind of, it's like a, just a little analysis thing. We're taught the, the training that I have um, for vocal pedagogy and accents. Um, you're sort of taught baseline diagnostics. So it's not a speech, a clinical um, training. It's um, a creative and a, what's the word? There's anatomy and physiology and stuff, but it's not a three years at uni. It's a one year master's degree. Um, but you're taught diagnostics in terms of picking up on the things that you know you can fix and you can help and then the little triggers and the warning signs which make you go you need to see your doctor and go to a voice specific slt or a laryngologist or something like that so there are a couple of things i ask people to do if, if they're uh, talking about vocal fatigue and there's never any there might be something wrong with you can you make this sound right, you know it's all right. like, under the radar and I'm like can you just do this and how does it feel this and by asking a few questions I can start to decide whether it's something that's in my wheelhouse or whether I should refer it on and part of that is pedagogy so it's how to disseminate the information that you know or can do well to other people with many different learning styles and neurodiversities which is sort of the thing that I have that's different to a lot of coaches out there because a lot of coaches go into coaching because they're really good at the job and that's fine and a lot of them end up being very good coaches too. But I have sort of a formal training um, in that area. That does not necessarily make you a good coach, by the way. <laughs> right. But you but know, you know what you're listening to when you listen to a voice. And it, for me, it's about connection as well to the to person. So everybody's different. So some people need visual, some people not need aural, some people need kinesthetic, some people need a mixture of all of them. Some people need a bit more time. Some people like honesty. Some people like we call it a shit sandwich. You're great, but shit, but great. <laughs> um, so every, everybody's different. Um, yeah. So that is the important the thing that I'm really grateful that I have the training for is the understanding people and the connection and stuff. Um, but what your friend might be referring to is there are different stages of treatment and investigation when it comes to voice things. So the first thing a, a doctor would tend to do, at least in the UK, is Firstly, you usually have to fight for a referral, guys. So just keep pushing. 
Your and then you go and they stick that thing down your nose and the back of your throat, which is why I now won't ever go again. It's not as bad as you think, though, and it's flexible now. It's not like a hard tube. Depends what you get. But um, they'll send you to like an ENT to have a quick look and they'll say something or tell you or do a little report and then send you back to the doctor or call you back in for something. Um, and then what people often what you get is, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Take As reflex in, medicine fine. because we figure that must be it because yeah. we can't find what it is. <laughs> yeah. It looks fine. So then you get them back and they're going, but my voice is still crap um, or my voice is still changed, etc. Um, so for that, then it's back to the doctor, maybe to a speech and language therapy that therapist that specializes in um, elite vocal performers. So in Manchester, we have a clinic in, in the south of Manchester called, um, which is a, like a, well, I was going to tell you the name of the hospital. That doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's an, elite, it's an elite vocal performance clinic. So they have a team of people, including speech and language therapists, um, coaches who cross over. So one of my mentors is a coach who also works in the clinical setting. Um, and then they'll either give you stuff to do, get you back in a couple of times, or send you to somebody like me who knows enough to get you through what you're going through and you, when you you know you, if you don't need the extra sort of medical attention so i sometimes i work with a few you know quite a few people coming off the back of reflux stuff or off the back off the back of vocal damage and um surgery and whatnot um it's not like official like i'm not officially on the team but you, you know what you tend to get is it's the connections isn't it? And people say well you should just look for a voice coach to help you with that because actually you don't need us um, but you also wanna... you're a voiceover artist so you yeah, get because do you if, if you tell a doctor this is how I make my living I do audiobooks you get that kind of really polite they're not listening to you not okay right. you know that you might need to get another job honey kind of thing yeah. you talk about <laughs> being a nurse I... um... <laughs> hmm. yeah you can yeah it's the, so here's a wee trick. Here's a wee hack. Okay. Don't tell everybody, but the the ding 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 alarm bells for a doctor. It tends to be if you've had a significant vocal change, and there's literally no reason for it. Like you've not had a cough. It's not allergy season. You're not stressed or anxious. Or like that. If you have a really significant vocal change that doesn't go away for two weeks or more, that's when they'll send you for because that's sometimes when it's, you know, something slightly more serious. Yeah. Most of the time not, but you yeah. know, that's then, so that's what I tend to say to people is, <laughs> it's been like this for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so but two most, weeks. Most, most professional voice users will will push on through until it gets to like breaking point. That's the concern. And that's, that's the thing that I, that's the reason I put myself out there at the moment, because um, so much of my practice is, um, cure rather than prevention and right. cure is harder more time consuming more stressful more money prevention is the is the clever thing it's come on for a session every three or four months just checking in you come for a session you set up a wee warm up you go away you see how it works um you check back in we tweak things you know um uh, that that's is the sensible and most economic and efficient way of doing it the the hardest thing for people is when they come and damage is done that's the problem mm. like it's classic over here in january after pantomime season as you guys don't really have pantomime yeah. and people in the uk here but pantomime yeah, but I, I did that i was that girl it was like you can't really talk good. for a month yeah <laughs> and the actor just can it like big character voices it's really melodramatic and it's all very cartoony and they come in january and they go just finished Panto. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. why didn't you come to me in November? <laughs> but then, you know, it's, it's a slow, steady process. Um, and the one thing that you have to remember with, just like if you have an injury with your wrist or your ankle or you pull something when you're running or whatever in sport you choose to let, spend your life doing, these things take time. And the problem with your voice is for most people, resting it isn't an option. Like, and total vocal rest isn't really recommended anymore at least over i'm only working with my knowledge by the way guys and how it works in the uk but even post-surgery they'll, they'll say a couple of days vocal rest but then they'll get you to be doing 
glides up and down and we're getting you to do some tension release because you don't want this to get stiff mm. you want to i had a client yesterday who's having issues with their voice and they were like i've just stopped talking now completely but it's just getting worse and i'm like well you know that odd day every now and again where you decide to just lie on the sofa and do absolutely naff all because you're wrecked is it harder or easier to like get up and walk after that it's harder because you've been laying on your bum doing nothing and everything yeah. sees and it's the same here this is bone and cartilage and muscle and ligaments and all that stuff we have everywhere else and we have to keep it moving okay so so vocal rest no not vocal rest so warm-ups suited to you regularly yeah. they don't have to be hours and hours and hours then um exercise also- is good probably for breathing because i've noticed now that i don't do it my mm-hmm. breathing is pants <laughs> general aerobic fitness is, is yeah huge. general i used to walk before i used to give myself a commute and walk yeah. a half hour before work and a half hour after work that's so, a really good but i don't do I it anymore is um because the very nature of audiobooks is hours and hours and hours you guys are the marathon runners of voice i still the ninjas. <laughs> ninjas i like it um is there are things you can do mid-session that will reset the larynx and oh. release things again so that you can voice for longer or keep things going and reduce the um speed at which you get fatigued and then also a cool down as well at the end so it can't not just a warm-up some of the stuff from your warm-up you can then put in every hour hour and a half or whenever you decide you take your breaks and um, just to reset the larynx which is um hugely beneficial oh yeah that's another thing and we should take breaks like if you're going to do four hours of recording you should take a break well, which you would different. think would have made common sense huh if you, look, if you can record for eight hours straight, happy days, do it. You know, you're laughing yeah. all the way to the bank. But um, I don't have the attention span. I'm yeah. not very good with my that's, Well, that's when you start to make mistakes and your voice doesn't that, sound as yeah. great. And, and I'm sure you might need a wee at least in that four hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Outside noise. <laughs> there. But like, you know, there are things you could do while you're sat in the loo, just a couple of, I'm talking like minutes, like one or two minutes of release work just to release any tension that's building up in the vocal tract and just let the larynx drop down and find a little bit of freedom again after it's been um, working for you. And I think the other thing, well, most, most audiobook narrators that I come across have quite an easy way about them anyway. Like everything's quite not effortless that's the wrong but there is an ease about it so you're comfortable talking for long periods of time um you're comfortable with text and your voice um but one thing that you can always think about is just asking your larynx to do a little bit less um which seems like a really silly thing but we can have this sort of i was going to say mind control but that makes sound like an absolute (laughs) mental case um uh, you can our mind You're is talking perfect. to a group of people that stand in, cl- in booths of course, yeah, six yeah. hours a day and yell and shout at ourselves <laughs> and yeah. tell ourselves we're in love with ourselves. So probably not much you can say would be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so is, yeah, one of the, the first things that I, I often do with people when they say voicing is effortful is, is asking a really simple question, which is, have you tried just asking for less? You just try doing it with a little less effort, which is a really simplistic way of thinking about it, but it's surprising how much it helps. Because I feel like a lot of the time with, I find myself getting very um, enthusiastic, you know, when I'm voicing, I'm putting everything into it. And I do more commercial and, and corporate short form yeah. stuff because like I said, no attention span. <laughs> but, um, but, and you have to put everything into it, don't you, for those? About like 30 seconds or what have you, and then I can sit down again. But, um, yeah, it's really interesting, especially when you're doing those bigger bits and those slightly more intense voices. Maybe you're crossing a gender boundary or you're going aging up, aging down, doing something slightly more energetic. It's asking this for less and putting more into the body. So oh, okay. thinking about finding grounding and release and stability in the body so that your voice can be a little bit freer and not trying to get everything from here. So what common things do you see narrators do that they should stop doing? This. 
I really need to work on that. So what do you say, just, you've got a video. I don't want to waste too much of your time going over what you've already put out there. You guys, Nicola's got an amazing video where she shows you proper posture. <laughs> but it starts with your posture, doesn't it? Not just your chin. Posture is everything. Posture is everything when it comes to voice. You have no idea how many vocal issues and how much fatigue can be reduced just by thinking about posture and alignment. It's magic, total magic. So, uh, let me, so, I don't, so, so if I'm just talking like this, so I'm like, hey, I'm saying stuff and everything's really nice and I'm reasonably aligned here. It's a bit of a weird angle, but I'm doing okay. But if I kind of even just do this and start leaning in and I'm doing something really emphatic and I'm thinking, you can hear what's happening to my voice, like the strain. Now that's an extreme version, but I see it like I see it so much yeah. in all voiceovers because it's, it's so weird. funny. We're all like everyone's heads are like <laughs> I'm looking at the gallery and everyone's suddenly standing really straight. <laughs> I'm fine, Nick. I don't do it. I'm fine. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. But it's true, like, I get it. I totally get it. So, you know, watch the video. It's pretty straightforward, but like, if you're sitting, you have to think about the position of the chair and the mic. Yeah. And place yourself, place your like mic position before you place the rest of your body and then find some grounding and some stability from the floor upwards. Um, mm -hmm. So what people, what I, what the voicers often do is, I get myself grounded and I'm lovely and I'm released and my knees are released and my feet are under my hips and my bum is uh, heavy and my spine is long and my neck is free and I'm thinking about all my Alexander Technique principles and I'm inhibiting the desire to uh, blah 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 <laughs> and, then, and then they realize they're too far away from the microphone so they just go hello and welcome to this e-learning module <laughs> so um, do that bit first to get your position, work down, and then work back up and refine that grounding. I think that's my biggest tip. And you can still be grounded and find that stability in a chair. Um, so yeah, that's the alignment thing is one. Okay. Uh, the other one is like, and forgive me, and I'll, I'll take guidance on this because I'm learning about the audiobook world a lot, working with lots of you. <laughs> is um, some people feel as soon as they start they go into a and now i'm narrating voice and uh every book i this is just the voice i put on when i'm uh, oh, that's a new that's a lot of new I, I might be out of line saying this but it's something that narrators tend to do when they start but yeah. you can't keep that up for well, covering that yeah <laughs> yeah you you can't keep that up for long and also it gets kicked out of you by reviewers if anything yeah. um so then you go and get coaching and they yell at you a bit or the way you say the shit sandwich and they tell you you're great but don't ever do that again <laughs> and you stop pretty quickly yeah i'm <laughs> If you're very experienced you're much more authentic on the mic at least for the narrators for the protagonist's voice depending on you know um but yeah so i think coming to the microphone and coming to audiobooks and any voiceover with the realest form of you, the voice that you have lived with for your entire existence is going to be the easiest way for you to get through things. Yeah. Um, there are ways, loads of ways you can manipulate the voice really safely and um, really efficiently with no damage to, um, to, to get those different vo those different voices. And I know, a lot of the time with with audiobooks it's not like extreme all the time you know it's subtle yeah. washes of this and like flavors of that which i'm a big fan of but you know i'm all I, I like to explore the idea of the change in breath rhythm or the change in physicality before i explore the change in voice and um, with people when they're doing characters for things like this because it's much more interesting if you think about it from a whole and safe if you think about it from a whole body perspective so if I'm doing an old person um, then I put on a slightly because I do character stuff but with more animation and gamey things um, then I think more about my physicality how the physicality affects the, affects the breath um, how the person of that age would breathe, you know, like we don't all have fabulous breath forever. Um, but if you it, do animation, I mean, that's hardcore. That's like the, the super leagues of like character development because you only have a short amount of time to create 
a complete, I mean, the, I think I'm amazed at some of the ones that do the animation and do the characters. Well, like they, they've got three sentences and they can create a character that you remember forever that you would never mistake for another character. And that's a narrator's dream to be able to do that. See what you I'm saying? You don't need to do, do the things that are that extreme though, do you? No, but we, but we need to be able to access the differentiation between differentiation between I'm not pronouncing that right. Dif we need to be able to access the difference between the character, access the difference between the characters. So that's um, where I think physicality is like hugely um, powerful. Yeah. But I, um, my research when I was training was in ca vo man vocal manipulation for character voicing. So it was about codifying a system that you could anchor character voices in so that you knew where they were you know so you could, it was about making a code a three-step system that you could had little symbols and you coded it so you could oh well that's that one right yeah i remember that and it was all based in uh, physical manipulation so like the first stage was the energy of the of the character um which was lab and movement analysis um the then it was where you place it in the vocal tract which was based on still and a few other things and then it was oral posture which is night thompson speech work so it was about it was about the energy behind it where you place it and then shaping it so i've always been like a, a, a big character actor so when i was doing theater in london i was never like the lead um i was always like there's six other characters we can't afford anyone can you do all of them <laughs> so like i was the like running off stage for a hat and a mustache and a walk so so my my whole kind of the whole canon of my acting background has been manipulation in some way yeah. um and yeah for me it's always been about physicality and i think it um it's a good it's not about like just doing silly uh and like being an agent it's about going oh well i'll place this one in the nose that gives me somewhere to put this one or maybe this one is dab as opposed to ring which is part of like that i love movement. that maybe this one has a really press energy or maybe this one's a little bit floaty and that sort of thing and the the effect that physicality and exploring that can have on the voice is is all you need you know you don't have to think about like doing something really like painful um it just gives you something else to grasp onto i really love i really love that i've got to say because because i've always gone straight to the attitude of the act the attitude of the character what are they thinking what are they trying to get i've always done the whole method thing with the character with the acting thing and if i'm honest about it it's because even when i was in theater if i was okay this is just me okay wrinkles and all if i was skinny i was great with the physicality but if i was feeling like not skinny or fat or having in a a bad you know i broke my arm right before one performance and went through the whole thing in a cast if i'm not feeling great the physicality i tend to like leave that aside which is probably why i love audiobooks because no one can see you but yeah. you can't just ignore that i don't do anything i mean i obviously do you know if you've you've been trained you obviously do but you're so right. If you bring in parts of the character's physical being and attach it, it would bring add a whole extra thing to the whole. They can feed each other as well. You talk about, yeah. you know, their, their state of mind and their emotional state and, and you can, one feeds the other. For, for some actors, it's, it's a chicken and egg situation. So some people will start with method or start with Meisner and, and, you know, they'll be all given circumstances and what do I want from this scene and how am I trying to affect this person and all that kind of stuff. And the physical stuff will come second. But right. then some of my training has been in like physical theater and from physical perspective, sometimes you can do the physical bit first and you can see how that affects the emotion and what that brings to the voice. Um, so both are valid and I think both also feed each other and when it comes to in a, in a performance capacity and I think it's also worth saying like I said when you have multiple multiple characters like up into the three figures of characters to find right. some with one line you don't want to spend an entire bloody time going what do they want from the scene you know like <laughs> <laughs> and we try I'm telling you we try <laughs> yeah and that's really commendable but like it might it's be not, other ways. it's not <laughs> It's not. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's, and then always, those are always the books that have like seven. And they always throw a curveball in like the fifth book. 
yeah. with the character that you've been doing. I love that because it's like clowning. Because when they train you as a clown, you've got to use the physicality because you can't use the voice. It's the same thing. It's such common sense. Okay, I swore yeah. I wouldn't take this entire call with me getting personally excited about questions because I should go back to questions that the group will want to ask. So bad habits, physicality we've covered. Um, game changers, anything you've personally done yourself that, that you wish you'd known earlier that... Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Let me think. Um, tension... And then after this, we'll, we'll open it up for people because I want to make sure they have enough time to. Tension release. So a warm up doesn't need to include much noise at all. For me, the key and the most power in a warm up comes from releasing tension. So tongue root tension because your tongue roots directly, your tongue's directly attached to your larynx. larynx. Um, so if you've got any tongue root tension, it's going to. Um, impede the freedom of the larynx and therefore make voicing more effortful because your larynx has to tilt and shift and move up and down to voice uh, to, to help make the sound um so i think for me you know when i was first starting out i got all this all the singing training in the world but and i was like la, 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 doing the first thing i did in the warm-up was make noise and <laughs> sure you can bring some humming in and gent bring it in nice and gently but actually you can warm up without making any noise <laughs> which is really interesting to me. And then the other thing, which is a game changer, which is a constant thing I'm working with and battling with um, as quite an enthusiastic person is ease. So one of my favorite yeah. um, voice practitioners who I love for so many reasons, Barbara Houseman, I don't know if you've had uh, her voice, her book, um, Finding Your Voice, they're all called Something Something Voice, Voice Something Something. Um, I, I, get think, the whole I think I might. Finding your voice, I think. Um, she constantly talks about ease tr doing everything with ease and um almost at going at things as if you're an olympic champion at it like you don't even have to try which is a really could, interesting mindset to explore could you please post her name on the comments after i i'll, I'll put a comment after this call because i'd love to i'm a bit of a junkie i always buy these books but then i might need a coaching session to actually do the uh, work or, uh, I'm putting it in now because I'll forget Houseman. Because there's something about buying the book that makes you think that you're going to be perfect as soon as you have time to read it. And like, it's not, well, like by osmosis, it's going to make me a better narrator because I don't actually ever open it up and read the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, she's a great practitioner. And one of the reasons she's a great practitioner is because she still goes to courses and she's still learning and still developing her practice. Yeah. Um, I, like I've been to courses that she's taught and I've hosted courses that she has taught for me. Um, but I've also been on the floor on a mat in a course with her still learning. And, you know, she's been doing this for God, 40 years. And I just think that's so important. And for any of you looking for coaches, whatever it happens to be. So this, this is a new thing for me and I love it. It's like, um, don't go seeking the person who's found the truth. Don't follow the person who's found the truth. Follow the person who's still looking for it. So oh, I love you. That's brilliant. To have the answer and the method and the way. Um, yeah. I'm always wary of that because part of my ethos as a coach, I think it's only responsible, is um, to constantly be still training myself. I'm doing 10 weeks at the moment. I'm doing 10 weeks of techniques, just brushing up and checking in on research and making sure I know what's going on. But that's one of the reasons I like Barbara. And like she said, you know, some of the stuff that's in her book, she wrote it like 20 odd years ago. She, she'd change and she wants to write a new book, but it's fine in the time. Um, so I still fly in here. Um, <laughs> I just think that's a really interesting one as well, because, you know, you're here because you want to learn. And um, it's like, who am I in comparison to all the other bloody coaches? And I just think voiceover, as I'm sure you're all aware, is awash with great coaches and not so great coaches and i think one of the one of the red flags for me is when did you last go on a course when did you last learn something and yeah. how, how do you react if i question your method yeah it's a conversation it's a dialogue it's a constant dialogue and you have to have access to loads of different things because everybody is different so anyway that was that. a bit of a I love that. Now we've got lots 
Okay. Um, lots of enthusiastic chat, you guys. I have not been looking at any of the chat in case there are any questions. Um, Rebecca's asking about potassium and other electrolytes. Um, how important are they? Should you, can you, she, I mean, she just said potassium and other electrolytes play a part, but I think I missed part of the conversation. All yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Was that, I think they came up with a coffee, was it? Yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah. yeah. It was at the beginning of the call. So Rebecca want to come on and just, um, Re Rebecca, are you still here? Let me see if she's here. Rebecca, I'll unmute you. What were you saying about potassium and electrolytes? I, I was just adding to the conversation at that time, like um, hydration. You know, she was talking, you were talking about food. If, yeah. you, if you get enough nutrients and things, and I'm like, yeah, potassium and electrolytes. And, yeah, yeah. I had a big problem with that. I actually drink carrot juice now because I, I had like a few months where I was just dehydrated all the time and I think I was low on potassium and so now I drink carrot juice like a lot and um does and it I help a lot. yeah I still have ridiculous mouth click noise so I use rx for that but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, it's it helps with the de with the hydration for sure yeah a healthy diet is, is really, really key. And uh, some people think the answer is, you know, carry on one, one of those ridiculous arm breaking, like six gallon, well, I just drink this. This is what I drink. And it's like too much water is also damaging. So is it? It, that's, that's why. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how you lose electrolytes too. So. Hey, flush it. Like right. when you said electrolytes, that's what came into my head is overhydration. Like your body just like, just gets rid of it um, and takes a lot of stuff with it. So there is a balance. You've got to be very careful. And that's why I say it's about awareness. I mean, it's really, really simple, but and thirsty is different to everybody. But firstly, you need to be drinking generally all the time, you know, little sips. There's no point having two pints before you get in the booth because you'll just need a wee. Um, because water takes about between four and eight hours to, to actually um, affect the vocal folds at a cellular level, which is where they need hydrated because the water doesn't go past your vocal folds, it goes down a different shape so we don't die. Um, so you have to just constantly be keeping up the water and everybody's different. So I have, I have like a 500 ml bottle and I'll, I'll tend to get through maybe three and a few cups of tea and that's, that's fine for me, except today when every pore in my body is drowning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living on the stuff, living on it. Yeah. So yeah, it's awareness, but you're right, you're, Rebecca, like it's just overall health. But I'm wondering, maybe that's why, because I've been feeling like I'm like sick and getting a cold, even though it's boiling hot, it's because of all the water you're having to drink is probably messing up your electrolyte balance in the, yeah, in the hot weather. Yeah. Um, now, we've got we another- cold as well, don't we, so. Sorry, I, I get easily. Jennifer Blom, are you still here, Jennifer? You know it. Hi, Jennifer. Hello. <laughs> She's got a question about tongues. Yes, and <laughs> let me use my voice to ask it because we're voice actors. Um, <laughs> what is your, my question was, what is your favorite exercise to do for tongue root release? Uh, yes, I love tongue root release. Um, I just so, wanted you to stick out your tongue, like, on <laughs> This <laughs> will be on YouTube. <laughs> Just, Thank you for that. This, this will be preserved <laughs> for all eternity. <laughs> She's the one with the red wine tongue. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so, the, just in case people are unaware, um, the tongue is like this massive thing that fills your entire cavity here and comes all the way down and attaches to the larynx. So, if you pop your hand, if you just make it any kind of noise, la 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 la, 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 la. Bit. Mm -hmm. that'll be that's where your larynx is. It's okay. Somewhere around here, and you can have a little gentle touch. You'll find like a ridgy bit, and that's part of a particular cartilage. But your tongue root attaches to the larynx up in here by a little bone called the hyoid bone. So, like I was saying, if there's any bunching at the back of the tongue or any tension, raises the larynx up, reduces the resonant space at the back of the pharynx, throat, um, and restricts laryngeal freedom so tongue root is like go to if i have time for nothing else tongue root um and a couple of nice things are this now guys 
voice work. It's a little bit silly, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> don't do it on the bus. <laughs> um, but uh, a really nice one is putting your tongue out on your lower lip. Uh -uh. Nice and relaxed like a slug. This exercise is called slug tongue. And then you just speak through nice and gently, remembering the word ease, days of the week, months of the year, and count one to ten. So you end up with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday. And you want to make sure the tongue stays out and doesn't go back in and out all the time. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then look, come back in. Now it just feels really nice. So it stretches the tongue out, releases bunching at the back. Very good. Oh, that's exciting. Also, um, uh, you can also just actually manipulate and massage the tongue from underneath the genia glossus muscle, um, which is the one that kind of attaches it down here. So if you take your, just hook your finger over the front of your chin uh, and then put your thumb sort of in here. Isn't that a hyoid one though, the thing that in all the books I narrate they use to kill people with like one swift blow to the hyoid? Like, because oh. I don't want to get near it and kill myself. <laughs> I've think, never heard of anyone killing themselves because of the hyoid bone. Okay. I have heard of people having having a stroke because somebody who's unqualified has done laryngeal massage on them. Do not have laryngeal massage from anybody apart from a medically trained professional in a okay. voice class. Okay. So don't do it off YouTube. Don't do it off YouTube, for the love of God. Yeah, because I did that, and then I had pounding in my ear all night and had to call the doctor the next morning. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this. This is not laryngeal massage, though. No, no, this is tongue right. I'm nowhere okay. near my larynx. My larynx okay. is here. Okay. Maybe just go on. Just like a forward motion, like that. But it doesn't feel like your tongue is there. It feels like the bottom of your mouth behind your teeth. Am I just being stupid about... <laughs> right, well, pop your thumb in there, close your mouth, and with the tip of your tongue, just run the tip of your tongue up the back of your teeth and into the hard palate, that domey bit. Oh, what do you feel? I see. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay. Gosh. So that's quite nice. We're also well. just doing the thinker pose now. We're aware of this, right? We're like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got another question. Rebecca says, general question has any from everyone, has anyone felt they're experiencing vocal atrophy due to COVID quarantine? I was losing my voice. Why am I doing this? Rebecca, where are you? Rebecca, hi. What are you saying? So hi. you lost your voice recently? Yeah, um, and we talked to this in one of the other sessions, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I'm finding now that like the more I use my voice loud, the better I am. Um, and I used to work in a restaurant, and I taught a lot of fitness classes. And I always thought, well, that's probably not great for a narrator, but I gotta you know make ends meet. And now I'm on unemployment, <laughs> not doing any of that, and my voice is getting worse. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, like I said, if I'm on days that I'm using it a lot. Um, and speaking loudly, not just speaking quietly to my boyfriend who I live with, it's actually better. I think I'm getting more airflow and just using those muscles more. I wonder, I wonder because, because since I've had problems with my throat for two years, I've been afraid of using my voice loudly. Like, I don't think I could scream if I tried right now. Nicola, do you think that that's not exercising the muscles not using your voice at certain ranges is that what i'm doing not exercising the muscles is that what rebecca's if, doing if you don't use a muscle it it stops working at, at the optimum level and it stops gaining tone and it stops gaining strength like i don't do any upper body weights i don't do any lower body weights <laughs> but I, I don't do any upper body weights so now i'm getting a bit of bingo wing as we call it over here 
yeah. in the UK. I'm well aware, familiar <laughs> with bingo wings. Yeah, but, but saggy, saggy there. It's my own fault. I've not used those muscles. Those muscles have gone. Oh, okay. She's not naming me. See ya. Um, same thing happens to your voice. So again, one of the people who I train with would say that, let's take singing. If you were singing, you're always singing classical. Um, he would still suggest working out your chest voice your belt and all the other elements of your voice as well every day because otherwise your body loses the ability to do it so if like a lot of opera is sung in a sort of tilt position with a sort of tilting happening and you get this kind of oh, sort of feel uh, that's the kind of um, the aesthetic for opera and if you speak to a lot of opera singers you'll hear in their voice that they sort of have a, a little sort of hooshy tilt going on um, um, and that's because they spend so much time here, their body just gets used to it. Yeah, I so um, don't want that. <laughs> so yeah, so what he says, you know, in the warm up, you need to be, yes, warming up all those areas that you need for the thing that you're doing all the time. But you also need to think about your chest voice and come down out of that tilt and work all the other registers, M1, M2, M3, M0, um, and work it all. Yeah, so Rebecca's probably right because actually, I use my voice differently. I only, I only use my voice because I have catarrh in my throat. So I only use my voice above that in one area. I don't ever use it higher or lower. So I guess you're right. If you don't, if you're not working it out, yeah, because you think you're doing narrating, you're working your voice all day long. But if you're only ever doing it the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, use use it or lose it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, Larissa beat you to it. <laughs> you, you lose it. Yep. So, Rebecca, your assignment then, I guess, is to start screaming at home. <laughs> so, no, I think I'll start singing again. I'll start doing karaoke with the YouTube. Oh, well, that's good. That's brave. Join me on Smule. <laughs> Everyone should be on the Smule Sing app. It's the best. Uh -oh. anyway. What is that? Is that like TikTok? No, it's literally like karaoke. It's a karaoke app, pretty much. Anyway. Oh, my this gosh. This is a free advertisement, if anyone's it involves, here. It involves having my face recorded on video, and I'm not really... No, you, you can turn off the video. I like Except you just re been recorded now. You're going to be on YouTube. Oh, no. <laughs> Vogue, Vogue. <laughs> I like that. I will never be that brave, though. I've got to confess. But I like the idea. Um, release tongue tension, life journey, continuous learning. Somebody has to run and help an author. Okay, so any other questions, guys? Jennifer that... wrote diaph diaphragm breathing, and I just wanted to see if she wanted to ask about that. Or you just oh, yes, that was Jennifer. Jennifer? Oh, I was just saying, like, I was kind of adding to the conversation, like, breathing with your diaphragm helps with, well, at least with me. If I start breathing from my chest, I get vocally fatigued more quickly. But if I start engaging my diaphragm while I'm in booth, um, it just helps me talk on the breath. It's a very singer type approach to it, but it, it definitely can help with my fatigue in the booth. That's all. Yes. Yeah, so the, remember what the, the important bit with um, breath is the release element. Our body is designed to do the vocal support that we need um, instinctively. You know, if you, if, if you saw someone running in front of a bus and they were going to get knocked over, you'd have the volume, regardless of how much breath you had in there, you'd have the volume to go, oi, wait, or whatever you wanted to say, um, because our body is designed to do that. So um, what happens is our bodies get in the way and we try and take over and we try to do to control the diaphragm and we try to use the diaphragm and sort of thing and it's important to remember that actually there are no proprioceptive nerves in the diaphragm so you can't feel it at all um that's that's the physiology of it uh, what you can feel are the abdominal muscles that interdigitate and the other things around it so the one muscle that interdigitates or connects to the diaphragm is the lowest layer of abdominal, which is the transversus abdominis. And then it's like a corset muscle all the way around and it connects to the TA and um, to the diaphragm, it connects to the spine, various other things. Um, and then you've got the obliques and then you've got the rectus. Um, so as long, if you imagine the TA's job is to gently control the release of the diaphragm on the way up. So if this is the diaphragm and it comes down when I breathe in, and then as the breath comes out, what the TA does is just tense up to make that release a little bit slower. So it helps control that. If that muscle is already tense, when you take the breath in, 
it's got nowhere to go to to support the breath. So your breath will just come out or you start supporting here at the larynx, which is, Jennifer, what I imagine what happens to a lot of people when they've got this chest breath going on. So as long as you breathe in, as you, when you breathe in, you will release the abdominals. Um, then the TA has somewhere to go on the way out, which is great. Um, and as long as you remember that the in-breath is reflexive to use of the out-breath. So our body is designed to take the in-breath for us. It's very clever. That's how we don't die in our sleep. <laughs> like you don't, have to, you don't have to breathe in. Your body will breathe in for you. So as long as you use the breath well on the way out is you let the breath come out and then you let to your body you release the abdominals lovely open throat here and you um let the breath come back in it it will come in naturally for you because it's an exchange of pressure again that's just the science of it um your body takes air in to even out the air pressure on the inside outside of the body um so yeah the the release is the important bit for everybody when it comes to abdominal uh, um diaphragmatic breathing or low breathing or belly breathing or whatever you want to call it and and jay has a good point and i suspect it's where where i go wrong thank you jay the posture i know i've got and also do you notice i don't know if you notice this jay but and jennifer but when you do start when it starts moving up there i go even further it goes all the way up and that's when i start losing focus so all the way up in the head, it's like, I've, it's like, I guess if we imagine the breath is going as a circle, if you, or the energy is like a circle as you're narrating in and out naturally. Yeah. And if you're pulling it up and not, you're cutting it off. You just okay, make I'm it just a, freewheeling now. I need to shut up. A lot more effort for yourself. Yeah. And ultimately with long form narration, that's not what you want. Yeah. Yeah, so what Jay's saying is right. It starts with the posture, not yeah, the breath, so, right? Yeah, oh, oh my God, yeah, it all starts with posture and release. So because if your posture, if you're aligned appropriately and efficiently, then you can release all the muscles without feeling unstable. Um, and then your breath can come in appropriately. Tension, this is a Kristen Linklater quote, uh, tension kills vibrations. And voice is vibrations. So if you've got any tension in the way, it's going to dampen the potential of the voice for sound and pitch and volume. Tension comes from lack of efficient alignment because your muscles have to take over to keep you upright. So yeah, it's like, you know, which came first? Crap breath or crap alignment? Um, definitely crap alignment. <laughs> it's yes. not like I first. definitely have crap alignment. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jennifer, and I have crap alignment. <laughs> alignment. I've had crap alignment for days now. Yeah, I've been however old I am. That's how long I've had it. Yeah. We, <laughs> we should we should give you like a sticker for every day you go through <laughs> good posture. <Yeah. laughs> I'm on seven days. <laughs> I'll never get a sticker. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Was, the day years old when I realized I had crap alignment. <laughs> so is your posture a lot better now do you work on your posture or is it just an unconscious thing yeah yes so i am on a i i before i wanted to become an actor i wanted to be a ballerina and wow. i live in a world of suck it in dear wow. um, and then puberty took over and there were two very specific reasons i was never going to be a good ballerina and i'll leave it there <laughs> um so that was that and i went into acting but I, I that that stays with you that pulling in the core and that posture and that kind of you know this thing um now that's one part of that is lovely because it sets up a nice you know length in the spine and strength and core stability but actually for voice what you want is the ability to release the abdominals so you know cut to 15 years later and i'm training in voice and i get to my first voice class and it's link litter based and i, I just release your abdominals and i'm like pardon me <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, 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 can, picture, I can picture Nicola. <laughs> so what? So what, just let your belly go. I'm like, sorry. Let my belly go. Oh, interesting, because I'm not going to do that. And it was a real battle for me to let my belly go. And then I let my belly go, and I got bad back because I was so focused on my belly and not my core. Your core is from here to here. You know, I'm, I'm pointing down. <laughs> Your core is the whole torso, it's not just the belly. So that's the thing that you, you have to think about as well. You know, I can lose the release, I can lose the strength in my 
belly muscles and I can anchor and find stability in the back of the body or the pelvic floor or, you know, um, the um, lats. So it's just about exploring. M m now my battle with posture has been since I had my son because that's a thing, <laughs> making yeah, a baby. Because you lose. Uh, now I can release my abdominals all day long because <laughs> they get the book. Um, <laughs> sorry, I swore. Um, <laughs> No, but but so what I'm working on now is, is finding stability in my feet because I spend a lot of time with my koala bear son on my hip. So I oh. sit into my hip. So now I'm trying to even up my hips again. And but you're building strength, aren't you? You're building uh, strength, lifting him. Yeah. Um, I'm efficient tension. Yeah. I have one strong arm. <laughs> so this is what I'm suspecting, which kind of sucks. So basically, two years of trying every miracle potion on earth, the message I'm getting, which is, I was hoping wasn't going to be true, is that I can't buy something at Holland and Barrett or Amazon that's going to fix this in six days or so, and I'm going to finally find the cure. Basically, I have to exercise, diet, sleep, and fix my posture. <laughs> the thing about... I'm going to say something that's probably controversial here um, and I'm not going to use any names because I don't want to be liable for anything, but you don't need lozenges to do, to, to fix your voice. You don't need any lozenger, especially lozenges with menthol in them. Ethanol. It Men almost killed me. The one menthol. I took had ethanol. And, and I, I know better from the menthol, plus it doesn't work, but, and Fisherman's Friends, do they have menthol in them? Mm, they have, is it eucalyptus, I think, something? Yeah, because I could like go through a whole pack. Reason, the reason they feel like they, just check when all those in, concoctions were invented. Check when they did the recipe. <laughs> and ask them if they, have they checked it recently? <laughs> <laughs> I we did. I to... did email the ethanol people, and it's Covinia or something. And then I got the cheaper one, and I did email them and ask them if it was okay for humans to drink it, because I thought I was going to die afterwards. So the the first thing is what you what you suck what you suck doesn't touch your vocal folds. So there's a lot of stuff. A lot of people say things like, "Oh, but they coat my vocal folds really nicely." They don't. Nothing goes down that way. Otherwise, you you die. <laughs> oh, you see. So so that doesn't touch your vocal folds when you suck on a lozenge. What you hit, what you feel in your air, area, in your passageways, is a really pungent herbal smell, which makes you feel like like yeah like, like yeah. Sorry, did you fly? But the reason um, you can smell it is because it's really pungent. <laughs> And I'm, Larissa's commented, I, I don't want to forget because she commented earlier as well on the posture, but Larissa's come back saying that Fisherman's Friend contains eucalyptus and menthol. Larissa, where are you? I can't see you. In addition to, a, and, oh, and a bunch, a bunch of sugar. Oh, that could explain it. And, um, menthol dries, is a drying, um, has drying effects, which isn't what you want for, for the vocal folds. Um, uh, look, and again, everybody's different. And if you yeah. want to bang the lozenges, go for it. All I'm saying is you don't have to. Just drink some water or Just have water. some local honey or something. Um, or a nice sweet tea or something that's soothing. Um, oh, saying that though, you shouldn't really drink anything too hot or steam. Just I heard that too, because I used to have hot water with lemon and honey in the booth and somebody told me don't have hot. Why? Does it make you think you've relaxed your vocal cords and you've not? Yeah, or? It's just heat dilates blood vessels. Oh. And there's in there. And if you, you know, if those blood vessels come any, you know, closer to the surface or anything, um, they can, they're just more prone to rupture. So there's just no point really. Um, Steaming is really great. I've seen that come up a little bit. And uh, yeah, thyme is lovely. The only lozenge I ever use, or uh, not for anything to do with the voice, just if I've got, I went through a, a very bad cough for a little while, is um, it's called, oh God, I can't remember, but it's got like thyme essence in it. And it's really quite nice. Oh, really? Like, find natural. the name for me. <laughs> in my head, it'll come to me. Okay. Um, 
my mind Ricola. Oh. Just kidding, it's not Ricola. I just wanted to say Ricola. <laughs> no, Ricola. Instead. <laughs> Those are great because they're just sweets. You might as well have a wine gum. If you okay. feel like cousins, just have a wine gum instead. Yeah. I, I'm going to take that, like, that's like I'm just going to eat them. You like, so know they're going to sell out of wine gums on Amazon. Like, well, right a professional this. told me to, so this is, <laughs> this is what I'm doing now. But a sweet, a sweet is good, though, isn't it? Because it gets your saliva going. Yeah, yeah, and it, like, sort of, I suppose, feels nice in the, in the back of the throat, in the pharyngeal area. Um, and chocolate. Steam- what I was going to say about steaming again is don't put anything time. Yeah. But don't put anything in it, like any drops of anything. Um, and you need to leave 15 to 30 minutes after steaming before your voice because of the heat thing. Um, so don't be like, suddenly he walked in the door. Um, I, I can't, every time I try steaming, I feel worse afterwards. I think I either do it wrong or maybe I'm too enthusiastic. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> boiling <Nothing>. water <laughs> you enthusiastically steam you're like oh. i do i do like i'm gonna burn every bit of this <laughs> well, we're here, we most people use this thing called the dr nelson's and here i got which, one yeah and what you get is people going <sighs> and sucking on it rather than just breathing so yeah you just have to like breathe normally but the new this the newest fangled thing in vocal care is um uh, I always need to forget the name. Nebulizer. So nebulizing uh, medical grade saline, um, which is apparently no. They're not sure if the droplets of steam are actually small enough to get past to go into the vocal folds. It still feels nice in the pharynx and it can still, you know, kill some bugs and, and cleanse back there potentially, but they're not sure it actually gets to the vocal folds anymore. Um, so what the nebulizer does is make the, is sends the droplets through like a little I suppose not net like there's a better word for it but like the whole thing about nebulizer is that it makes it into a mist which is much which is smaller than the steam um so uh, See, the, I don't... yeah yeah there's there's one that does this and there's an attachment that's just a tube um the one that i've asked i'm getting sent is called a vocal mist that's the one that everyone's using um but it's stuck at customs <laughs> i don't know why oh. what the thing comes um <laughs> But it come and it comes with little vials of this stuff that you put in it. So that's the newest thing, apparently. So I'm going to test that out and see how it goes. But it's not um, you're not inhaling it up your nose then, because that little, bit freaks. Because you know how they have saline sprays and those things and you're talking about it like a neti pot. Yeah, that whole. scares the hell out of me. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, have a look, like have a look at a you know sagittal slice of of a head. The people, I, th- I think the, the folks going up through your nose to do brain surgery are going in a very different direction to, you know, the, the saline solutions and whatnot. Right. Because I love, um, is it Sterimar? Yeah, the, I got that stuff and I haven't had the guts to use it. I'm scared to. <laughs> it as well because sometimes it comes out your eye. <laughs> See, I'm a, that's a, that would make me think you're putting that stuff in your brain. Yeah, she just cleaned your eyes as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. <laughs> I've got somebody that says neti pots are great. Yeah, I've ha- I had a coach. Emily told me neti pots are amazing too. I just I've never used one. I I I just my, but my dad uh, just like is really funny. He has sinus problems. He just snorts salt water off his hand like some kind of addict. Um, and I I was sort of doing that, and then my mom got me a <laughs> nasal douche from um, isn't that the same thing yeah, yeah from the hospital which has like an atomizer thing on the end so you use that and then i discovered sterimar and i just use that i love that one um and sterimar it's goes up sorry guys we did you know this call was going to go to this level <laughs> but, <laughs> but so what does sterimar do actually it just like keeps you healthy or something because it doesn't have something in it like copper or something I think it's just salt water. The one I have is just like seawater. Um, it's just a salt water solution that sort of cleanses and um, re- removes impurities that are like allergy related. So pollen, you know the way when you, if you've got hair fever, it's bit, the pollen bits get stuck in your in the hairs in your nose and stuff. So it's just cleaning. Yeah. So so all that I think, and I suspect eating good food and a good diet. And Jay says 
see, I don't get mouth clicks, but Jay says a good thing for mouth clicks is breath freshener, like tips. I don't know what tips, which probably contains alcohol. Oh, how do we spell staring more? No, I don't get mouth clicks, like, but I do have RX seven. So maybe I do get mouth clicks and I don't know. And they're just gone when I, I don't really get mouth clicks. Um, but I, I have a horrible throat and I sound like a truck driver with a 90 day a pack habit. So <laughs> there's a trade off. <laughs> um, Steramar. So yeah, Steramar. And then what was Jay saying? Tips? I've not heard of those. Jay? Where are you? Wait, hold on. He's muted. Hold okay. On. Uh, hi. Uh, it, it's a little, hi. <laughs> uh, a, li a little bottle of, of liquid and you put like one drop on your tongue, something like that. Mm. <clears throat> and I don't know, very much like that. Very much like that. And it works very well for, um, <laughs> uh -huh. and it, it works very well for uh when your mouth is getting sticky because it does tend to unstick your mouth a bit what what is it for what is it it's for it's actually a breath freshener I, I saw scott brick use it in an interview one time and he's like this is my daily routine and he he doesn't tell him like that i'm never gonna be a scott brick impersonator but he like pulled one of these out so i went to the dollar store and bought like a crap ton of them so that's why they're yeah. sitting right here Ooh, why do i feel like we wouldn't be able to get them in the uk though Are you None of the <laughs> because they, like because they have chemicals and they'll probably like not be approved <laughs> in europe they're like you're putting what now in your mouth i don't know I don't know, that but stuff I bought over the counter over here, I swear to you, was like drinking paint thinner. And it worked. I would have kept doing it, but they said don't, under any circumstances, take more than seven days in a row. Sanderson's, was it Sanderson's, throw it specific. The stuff I took? Yeah. The, um, there was, there's, the main one is called Covinia or Covindia. Covinia, Covindia. Yeah. Cavonia, yeah. And then this was the cheap cousin of Cavonia, where everyone said was the same ingredients. <laughs> Covidia. Yeah. Covidia, or some sounds like a disease. <laughs> well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was some it was the cheap. I I would post the name, but if anyone takes it and dies, I don't want to be responsible. <laughs> it was like that strong. Don't die because of this talk. Yeah, I know, please don't. Please don't. None of us are doctors, nor do we play doctors on TV. No. <laughs> but no, I but do in audiobooks. Yes, yes. I don't play it on TV, but in audiobooks I do. Well, I'm I play psycho killers, so <laughs> pretty much <laughs> cover. <laughs> Nicola, the, any more purely professional tips or questions about vocal health that do we have for Nicola? Anyone? Is it Nicola or Nicola? Uh, Nick, usually. Nick. Okay, sorry. Nick. So. Does it rhyme with Ricola? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Call back. Yes. It's good. Nice. I like it. A little topper there. Okay, now we've we've descended into silliness. We've got <laughs> lots of doctors on TV comments. So I think we have covered the grown-up stuff. Um, spray and mouthwash and posture and diet and exercise we didn't, get, we didn't get to accents but um i have a free accent masterclass coming up so if you go to my website plug alert and also can i put that on the youtube video link could you well i'm going to post it after each of these calls i post a video on the group uh comment on the group saying thank you for the call could you please post your website underneath in the comments in, I've just put my website in right now. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, if you just go to the little menu, there'll be an ac there's an accent masterclass tab, and if you just pop your email address in there, um, you'll get all the details. But it's on the twentieth of August, um, and it's just a bit of a mini mini sesh because a lot of people have been asking the same thing. So, Nick Redmond, and do you keep them? Com you keep them completely separate. So when somebody signs up for a coaching session with you, do you um, do you say is it accent or is it voice? 
Do you see what I'm saying? When you, when you book, so on my website, you can book in for a one-to-one -one and there's a wee bit that says, what do you want to work on? And you can tell me what you want to work on in there. Okay. Um, the masterclass tab is different and that's just to sign up so that you get information about the masterclass. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. So, so then I will add this also to the bottom of the comment on the group page as well. <laughs> and, um, and if you're not in the voice and accent hub on Facebook, come join us there too. Yes. Yes. And I can get the link for that and add that to the post as well. So people can, it's great. I'm serious guys. Every single, cause she does, she, Nick, Nick does videos um, with tons of super helpful stuff that we could all use. And there's lots of great information that I keep meaning to go back and properly read, which I'm really going to do after this call, I swear. And some people have already signed up, so we're all set. Don't take all the spots, though, because I want to sign up. <laughs> Is it limited? No, no, no. no. It's okay. free, so. Okay. Yes. So we're set. Everyone sign up. Come one, come all. Thank you so much for taking the time, Nicola. You're welcome. Thank you. So much helpful stuff, and I can't wait. And we will post this on YouTube. And if anybody has any further questions, is it okay if they... Um, should they comment? Uh, go to your website probably and I'll come to the group and ask them in the group. Okay. So the next Q and A is on Friday, I think. So I do a weekly Q and A. If you find the post for that, you can put your question on. Okay. Or if you can DM me, just okay. slide in the DMs. Okay, <laughs> okay guys. <laughs> Great audience today too. Thank you so much for you were also interactive. This was wonderful, and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. You are. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>